stimulus. It is Talk about a stimulus, stimulus, stimulus package. Exactly. All right, let's get to our top talkers. The president responding to the criticism that he's doing too much at once. Take a listen. I know there's some who believe we can only handle one challenge at a time. They forget that Lincoln helped lay down the Transcontinental Railroad and passed the Homestead Act and created the National Academy of Sciences in the midst of civil war. Likewise, President Roosevelt didn't have the luxury of choosing between ending depression and fighting a war. He had to do both. President Kennedy didn't have the luxury of choosing between civil rights and sending us to the moon. And we don't have the luxury of choosing between getting our economy moving now and rebuilding it over the long term. John Heilman, you are a left-wing journalist living on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Defend the president. <laughs> I'm, I, I want uh, to. You're West down side, the The Upper West Side is not my is not my environs. But okay. yes, go on, please. Yeah, no, did, go ahead. For you, do, you, do you agree with the president there? I, I I do believe that it's possible for that that he's got to deal with the immediate and he's got to deal with the long term simultaneously. I think that's true. I do think there has been perhaps less focus placed on the immediacy of the banking crisis that is causing a huge problem. I think they need to focus more like a laser beam on that question for the good of all of us than they have been so far. Couldn't you argue that past presidencies <laughs> that were troubled focused on one thing, perhaps work. like wars that we didn't need to embark on and things like that that I'm, I'm led just, to I'm an ultimate laughing. laser focus on the wrong thing? Can we, can we tell the truth here for a second? Let's just put it out on the table, Mike Barnacle. We have been concerned at Morning Joe. There are no editorial meetings. It's just we have been concerned because there's always a good balance with Mika being center left, me being center right. Mm -hmm. And usually if you talk about torture, you talk about wars, you talk about foreign policy, there's this back and forth that works well. We're all against these bailouts, and we're all against the, the, these huge stimulus packages. And Meek and I haven't said a thing. I just she is working so hard no, to defend the White House. I'm not. And I think it's. I think you I think all are being funny. impatient and filling the airwaves with hysteria. Don't you think she's oh, doing we're not, well? We're not doing that. We're not. I think. I, I'm not, I, I think, think filling the airwaves with it, hysteria. I think we need to hear okay. from Secretary Geithner about this banking crisis. I okay. agree that there's been a communication uh, issue, can, can, but I think that I think this criticism about getting to the core of the problem and the heart patient don't do the analogy yeah, again. Can we agree on this? The, yes. the President of the United States, in that clip we just saw, Yes. I don't think there's any argument. He is a, he is a comforting and, and, and confident building uh, presence to people in this country when mm -hmm. they hear him and see him speak like that. Mm -hmm. And yet internally, everyone knows that the underpinnings of this republic and our economy uh, can't be dealt with on a piecemeal basis and it can't be dealt with by a Treasury Department with only one guy running around the building and Larry Summers working out of the White House and they have to have a, a, again it's cosmetics they have to have more of a concerted and more public effort to bring in people involved in it. I'm talking about the top bankers, the you know the top industrialists in this country, the Jack Welch's of this country. Let's have an economic summit now at Camp David. You can do all the other stuff. All the other stuff's on the table. It eventually will get done. But I mean, people people are worried about one thing paramount among all others. Their jobs and Thursdays come in their paycheck. And I would say that the banking crisis, of course, is the heart of the problem. And we would be criticizing them for rushing into something that doesn't... No, we wouldn't. No, we wouldn't be criticizing. If they, if they did what they what everybody said they needed to do and focus on the critical issue which is the banking crisis well, um, and yeah go well, ahead. I think but I think the funny thing about this is that you know the biggest misstep that Geithner made was when they brought out their financial rescue plan without enough detail right and and you could argue that the problem was he actually spoke too soon yeah. that it would have been better to wait another two or three weeks I don't mean months but I mean another two or three weeks and really have his ducks in a row right yeah. because in th I think he got pressured a little bit by the White House to come out with a half-cooked plan and that's really what all of his problems started right, right. The, the street went crazy yeah. and and the financial markets went crazy when they saw this they expected details and they didn't get details well, you know the president yeah. gave such a masterful performance press conference, I guess the Monday night before Geithner came out on Tuesday, and he kept teasing him, kept right. saying, hey, coming up tomorrow, I'm not going to get into this, Tim Geithner's going to give you all the answers tomorrow, wait till tomorrow, you're going to know what's going to happen tomorrow, and then Geithner came out, obviously couldn't follow Barack Obama in the first place, because Barack Obama's so great at, uh, in the, these formats, uh, but then he had nothing to say, and what? he still has nothing to say, and let me say, 
That is not Tim Geithner's fault. No. You have to tell your Treasury Secretary, this is where I want our country to go. And then Tim Geithner will say, okay, I'll put it into a form and I'll go out and give it. it, it that was so huge, what you're talking about now. It was so huge in terms of the psychology of this moment. Totally. Because John is right. The President of the United States comes out the night before Secretary of Treasury Geithner's appearance, and it's like, Christmas Eve, he announces tomorrow. I don't want to step on him. You know, Secretary Geithner will be here. I don't want to step on his lines. I, I don't want to preempt him or anything like that. And it's like you think you're getting an iPhone on Christmas morning, and you oh, you open up the package and you get like some new handkerchief. <laughs> it's like, oh, are you kidding me? Yeah. Yes, there is that. And the issue of capitalism has come up in a lot of the editorials. It also came up at a uh, little bit of a contentious hearing on Capitol Hill yesterday with the Senate Finance Committee. Top budget uh, guy Peter Orzag and Senator. Senator Grassley went back and forth over what is happening to capitalism and what needs to happen in the future. With